Uh, aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak, coming to you from Waikiki Beach. It's a beautiful day here today in Hawaii. We've had beautiful summer swells. We're moving into the fall season now. Uh, it's time for the swells to move from Waikiki Beach to the north uh, and start hitting the, the miracle seven miles on the North Shore where all the big, where all the big waves are. And so all the surfers are waxing, waxing up their board and checking out the weather report, hoping for a big low-pressure system off of Alaska to generate some, some big swells. And, uh, and so uh, uh, it's a time of the changing in the seasons. And I know uh, in our lives, our lives go through seasons too. And each, of, each one of those are ordained and blessed by the Lord. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You know, here in Hawaii, <clears throat> you know, we, we are more people of the water than we are of the aina. We're more of the makai than we are of the aina. Uh, we, we, our life kind of goes uh, based on what we do first thing in the morning. We get up, we look out the window, we see what the swell looks like. Uh, we, check in with, we check in with the waves and, and uh, kind of like sometimes we'll have a text from a friend coming along the coconut telegraph saying, the surf's up on the North Shore, the surf's up over here, the surf's up over there. Well, that's what we as Christians need to do. We need to check in every morning with the Lord, check the surf report out with the Lord. We like to call it dawn patrol. First thing is take that deep breath and have that time of prayer with the Lord uh, of devotion and praise and loving God back and then meditating on his word so that through the day, it's interesting when you spend your time reading scripture or doing the early morning liturgy hour and uh, uh, your day progresses, you'll find out that in this reservoir of your morning prayer time, there's riches that God will teach you throughout the day. The word meditate uh, actually means to ruminate. It's, it's what a cow does when it swallows something and uh, chews and swallows, and then they kind of burp it up again and swallow, chew it again and swallow it again. It's because they have multiple stomachs. Kind of as, and that's why I think the Christian word for meditation is ruminate, because as we, we read God's word in the morning, and then we meditate it throughout the day. Uh, God teaches us and reveals us, you know, his, his will for our lives and, and his insights and his love for us. And so we encourage you every morning, get up and have your dawn patrol, check out the surf with the Lord and uh, dawn patrol in that adventure of seeking God in his face first thing in the morning. Our guest today is Christian Van Uden. Uden. She's with Sophia Publishing, who's my publisher. And I just gotta say the people, every single person I've met at Sophia is excellent just excellent people and excellent in what they, they do. Christian serves as an author spokesperson for Sophia Institute. That means uh, because Sophia writes so many books that are by people that have passed away, someone needs to still speak for them on behalf when they republish those books. But now Christian is here because she uh, has written a new book, When the Cycle Swings. The Sickle Swings, I think is the way you say it. Maybe it's good to think of it in both ways because we're seeing this this historical cycle, this historical swing returning to us uh, of communism. She received a, her MA in history from the College of William and Mary and her BA in history and Russian from St. Anselm College. She studies the persecution of Catholics under communist regimes. She has featured, she has been featured on a wide variety of platforms, including Coast to Coast, the Federalist and Catholic Faith Network. You know, my, my interview on Coast to Coast, uh, when, I, when I was on that show, it's the biggest the biggest thing I ever did. I mean, I got so many yeah, hits from that I show. <laughs> got lots of interesting fan mail and discussions coming from that show yeah. still. Still. Months later. <laughs> yeah, 10 years later, it's still one of the most yeah. <laughs> high-performing shows. So, yeah, so That's it's good. It, it, it's so good to have. We want to get to know you a little bit. It's interesting. Your own heritage. Do you have a Russian heritage? Your name is Dutch, isn't it? Or what is your I'm heritage? I'm not. No, I don't have any Eastern European blood whatsoever. So people are always confused as to why I study something so intimately that I'm not personally related to. But really, the through line with everything I study is totalitarianism. So I am interested in martyrs, basically. My mm. favorite saints are all the martyrs. St. Catherine of Alexandria is one of my patron saints. And all the martyrs throughout the ages all have these very similar 
things in common despite the regime that's actually persecuting them. So when I look at the 20th century and our modern totalitarianisms, obviously communism is the big one. And so that's what I gravitated towards. You know, it's interesting. Um, you know, I go speak to men's conferences is one of the things I will remind them of right from the very beginning is I'll say, you know, back in the day, back when things were kind of barbaric, uh, like, you know, uh, it, last century down in Mexico, there was this socialist takeover and Catholics were being persecuted and pre people were being martyred. But, you know, that wouldn't happen today. But I mean, back in those days, those barbaric people were like that, you know, and we and, and they all laugh because they know exactly what I'm getting at, that 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 we're seeing it right now in the streets of of the United States, not just in, in these remote places. And the, uh, the the cry of the Cristeros. Viva Cristo Rey, long live Christ the King. And I have the men stand up, and they love to do it. They shout. It, the, 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 the roof shakes when they shout, Viva Cristo Rey. Uh, and so in this time, um, you know, we're seeing that, that cultural swing. But before we get into that, I want to ask about you, your own personal journey of, of faith. Sure. Sure. Yeah. So let's see, I'm blessed to have been born a cradle Catholic. So I've been Catholic my entire life, my family as far back as I can see on both sides has also been Catholic. So my last name is Dutch. I'm probably the first Van Uden that you've ever met. <laughs> if mm -hmm. you met another one, I would love to know because I'm definitely related to them. So mm -hmm. um, they, even in the Netherlands, remained Catholic and then the Irish and German and French sides, of course, did. So I have that pretty solid heritage, which I'm very grateful for. And I went to Catholic schools my whole life and really, from the beginning sort of started to see not only the Lord's work in my life, but also the opposition to my faith in the public sphere. Even within Catholic schools, there was sort of this hostility towards those who actually live out the principles of the faith. And, oh, we don't really believe that. That's just a metaphor and things like that. Mm -hmm. Somewhat more of a cultural pressure. Um, but that kind of awakened in me this sort of understanding of persecution and of the cultural moment that we're in does, that does not really allow for a fully fledged faith to be lived out in the public sphere. So I can say that this project kind of has been percolating in, in some form or another um, from my own experience, but I went to Catholic school my whole life, attended um, even a Catholic college, and it was there that I started studying Russian. And of course, I had always been reading about history. Um, I was very much into researching the Holocaust for my whole um, like undergrad experience too, as well as teens, and then realizing that this other story was occurring right alongside, which is this persecution within the Soviet Union and in the communist countries, mm -hmm. and how this one was less talked about and there were less resources on this. So that's kind of mm. where my energies went. So I researched, um, in undergrad, I researched the Romanian experience under both the Nazis and the communists, and then um, researched propaganda in grad school and <clears throat> after that really the thing that kept sticking with me is that there are martyrs in our midst there are those who survived who are white martyrs who survived this more um, cultural oppression still in our right. midst today right. and many of them don't think that they have interesting stories and they do and so that's where I come in is Really, I, I feel called to do this work to give a voice to people who are within even the last 20 years. It, it, the last communist regime fell, you know, within mm -hmm. our lifetimes, um, just just within my lifetime. <laughs> so mm -hmm. this um, this is a very contemporary issue. And so, yeah, that's a bit more of my academic background um, in terms of, of faith and work. I've been working at Sophia now for almost two years so that has been really a dream come true to get to read books not only books but catholic books for for a living so and to interpret them write about them um recently opened a sub stack where i've been writing and i would say the the biggest influence in my faith journey so far has been the traditional latin mass actually that mm -hmm. i started attending two years ago and um just obviously the beauty of it and of the the elements of the music and the, the prayer and the solemnity was very alluring to me but also i've learned so much about what the church actually teaches that i it's been filling in the gaps that i felt might have been missing in my in my catholic education and so yeah very blessed to be here 
Oh, that's beautiful. It, it's just too bad you're you know you're not able to really speak clearly and uh, and really uh, reveal to us you know your heart. It's just so sad that we can't get you to talk. You know, no, you're just so well spoken <laughs> and it's and you're so genuine and it really comes ac- and it really comes across. You know, the, um, <clears throat> I think it was wasn't Peter said you should we need to be prepared for a reason for our hope. And when I when I when I see you, I see hope. I see joy, because uh, you know you can see this, this this interview if you may be listening on EWTN or a podcast. But we have a, we have it available on YouTube too. But I can see that, and that people can hear it in your voice. That there's a, there's reason, and there's hope. Uh, in resident in this person, Kristen Van Uden. She's the spokesperson for a lot of a lot of books by Sophia, who happens to be my publisher. But she's now written a book, uh, when the sickle swings. And we encourage you to go to any Catholic bookstore, go to Sophia Publishing and and uh, get this book. But we'll be right back. We're going to go dig a little bit deeper with Kristen. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Now you can journey with other men on the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue through Bear's Man Cave community in our three-year school of manliness. Join at deepadventure.com. Better yet, You can lead your own sons through the same compelling video, audio, and written content. Can you imagine how much deeper your relationship with your dad could have been and how much more you could have learned and pitfalls you might have avoided if your dad had a tool like this to help to draw you both into a deeper, life-changing discussion? Now you have a trigger that you can pull that will take you into gritty discussions with other men and with your sons at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul. Both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com, and also on Amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. <clears throat> um, my wife has told me, and, and Sophia Publishing has told me, that I should let you know about my newest book uh, that Sophia actually has published. It was inspired by my wife, who's a rodeo girl. Uh, we were riding, we were driving a car along diamond head over here in waikiki and she said you're gonna love this song and she leaned over turned up the radio and it was a woman singing the the words where have all the cowboys gone she was lamenting where's john wayne where's my happy ending where's me uh where 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 is this where is this person that i've been i've 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 you know so many of us have this great image of of the cowboy the western cowboy who still exists by the way they're still there catholic uh, cowboy priest uh, Father Bryce Lundgren just released a book called The Catholic Cowboy Way with Sophia also. But my wife encouraged me to um, introduce one chapter, uh, just one chapter heading each for e- in each show. So today I'll talk about, in the book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? Being a man of your word. What a powerful uh, statement is. Cowboys are known for being men of their word. And not only do they... Not only do they keep their word, but they speak the word that needs to be spoken in a timely way, and they'll speak the word that needs to be spoken to the person that needs to hear it. You know, it's so easy to, uh, maybe someone offends you and you go and complain about them to everyone, but you never confront that one person and say, you know, we got to deal with this. 
uh, or there's something that needs to be said to someone, but you're just too weak need to get up and say, you know, if that you know, maybe it's a word of exhortation or correction. You know, if you keep going this path, you know, things are not going to go well. Or maybe it's a word of encouragement uh, to just say, uh, you're doing so well, and I'm proud of you. Or how about this simple word? You know, in Hawaii, we say I love you all the time. Today, I've said I loved you to uh, three different men <laughs> already, and the day is still young. How about just saying the words I love you? How about being a man of your word in that way? Uh, stand up for the word of God. Jesus Christ is the is the word uh, made flesh. So when you when you become a man of your word, when you when you stand for the word of God, and when you let your yes be yes and your no be no, you're uh, you are um, moving in that virtue of of justice and truth. So we encourage you, men, to be men of your word, and your women, of course, too. <laughs> We're talking with Christian Van Christian Van Uden. Her new book, uh, When the Sickle Swings, uh, is just just come out from Sophia. Uh, it's a book on communism, the effects of communism. But I think, Kristen, you know, when the sickle swings, I missed I mispronounced it earlier, when the cycle swings, but because really it is, it really, it is it is the sickle that you're saying. That's the, pro, the pr- correct way yes. to pronounce Well, you know, because we, I was ma- asking, do you know who Warren Carroll is? Do you love his history books? You know, and his books are just so excellent. And when you read through those books, you go, oh, here it comes again, the same old thing, mm-hmm. just kind of dressed a little bit differently, right? And so you've yep. seen, so you you're, you're a student of of communism and the oppression, uh, and this book talks about that. And yet, it really is warning us what's happening right now in our midst. Mm-hmm. Yes, I'm glad you brought that up, and maybe a serendipitous mispronunciation because this really is cyclical, and that is what you get. You know, the great aphorism: "Those who do not know history are doomed to repeat it." And sadly, it is true, as cliche as it is, and. The inspiration for this title came from the scriptural quote, swing the sickle for the harvest is ripe. And Mm. when we think of the sickle, it's a very apocalyptic image as well. The angel of death, the grim reaper, walks around with a sickle. And the harvest, of course, in parables refers to the people. So Mm -hmm. those who are ready separate the wheat from the chaff. And we, you know, at the end of the day, hope and pray that we are among the wheat who have remained faithful to God and to the church despite the poor growing conditions or despite, you know, what we see out there in the world and the hostility to the faith. So uh, it was a very apt metaphor for this experience under communism where the pressures were immense, not only the threat constantly of potential death and imprisonment and these very physical threats, but also of social ostracization and being left out, being unable to get a job, just, um, not having as many favors thrown your way, even things as light as that, or even losing friends and things that are not as quantifiable, were all pressures that added up to amount to a wholesale persecution. And when, when you think of the harvest, that is cyclical as well, right? You plant the crop, it grows, it develops. This is the soul going through these processes of spiritual growth. And then the moment of harvest comes where we must be ready. So there's this very memento mori aspect to this, that if the apocalypse comes itself within our lifetimes, yes, we have to be ready. But also when our death comes, regardless of what type it is, then we also have to be ready. So God will have our personal judgment. And in the end, that's all that matters is how we have prepared for that and responded to that. Um, In terms of a greater historical reading of this the the sickle is swinging back and i have this this part at the end of the book where i talk about how these stories which all occurred within obviously the last hundred years these people are all still alive who i interviewed for the book how this is swinging back the pendulum is swinging back and the the main countries that i focus on for the book are cuba czechoslovakia hungary and romania and that's simply because these are the individuals that um, would wanted to be interviewed for the book, so it provided a nice framework. And of those, the country of Cuba is still communist and is still suffering under the same yoke that these people that I interviewed escaped from. And the martyrs there, you talk about the Cristeros at the beginning mm-hmm. and their shouts of Viva Cristo Rey. The martyrs in Cuba shouted the same thing, which I was amazed to hear that in the fortress of La Cabana, which was made into a prison by the Castro regime, The Catholics there who were shot by the firing squad were proclaiming Viva Cristo Rey unto their deaths. Mm, mm. That was in the 1960s, so even more contemporary than 
the turn of the 20th century with the Cristeros. And yes, that regime is still in charge and has not fallen even after the collapse of the Soviet Union. Um, in Eastern Europe, it's a little bit different because obviously Czechoslovakia has fallen. That is no more. They feel the reverberations of that, not only economically and morally, but also in the, the psychological aftermath of communism. And that is part of what I, I've spoken to my contributors about is the, the legacy of how they operate, you know, in this culture of fear and distrust and how unhealthy that is and, and just not not great for society, obviously, but also it has an individual impact. Um, but then we have the problem of China, obviously, the other great communist country that is still in mm -hmm. existence. I actually did have a few people from China that I was in contact with for the book, but given the uh, political climate over there, it was too dangerous to actually share their stories. So that is tantalizing. It says it all right there. Story. Says it all right there, yes. yeah. <laughs> And so we have, um, in addition to Cuba and China, there is Vietnam, still North Korea, obviously, and we see what's going on in Venezuela and Nicaragua. So there are actual communist regimes still operating in the world today. So that alone makes it. But timely. you know, the the, sp the spirit, uh, the demonic spirit <laughs> behind it, though, is everywhere. I mean, you see that. You know, you think about that during the French Revolution, that wasn't communistic, but it was that totalitarianism that rebelled against. Why do they always pick on the Catholic Church? You know, right. but they <laughs> rebelled against the Catholic Church. But you know what happened there, uh, Kristen? You know, re remember the guillotine? So the the guillotines that they set up and killed so many Christians. Eventually, they turned on themselves and started guillotining themselves. You know, that, that woke cancel culture uh, bridged that gap for us. When you see people wanting to cancel people because of the stand they're making, we're seeing that every day right here in America. But now they seem to be canceling on each other. You know, you don't, you know every day you got to wake up and say, well, what's going to offend someone next? Mm -hmm. I'm glad you bring that up because that is one of the subtler legacies of communism is this cultural colonization of the West that has almost mm. occurred. And Many researchers have gone into the reasons behind this. Is it something that is planned? Many argue yes, as in Diana West's book, American Betrayal, discusses how you know many uh, elements of many infiltrators into the US government actually were seeding this in the culture deliberately, but also just the loss of God in the West. When a large part of my argument is that when humanity loses sight of God, something has to take his place. And so, um, Father Vincent Michelli put forth this theory that the gods of atheism, as his the book title of um, his work on this goes, are all of these lesser gods. So the self, money, power, even equality and peace. Because communism's great lie is that it always seeks to establish an earthly utopia, which we know is impossible because we are in a fallen world, even mm -hmm. though we're redeemed by Christ. That's just not going to happen here, no matter how much the government tries to make that happen. And <clears throat> so these these temptations um, are very, they, they seem on the surface to be things that we want and should achieve, but it's in this fatal flaw of giving under communism to the state and in the West to the state, but almost more so to this cultural uh, sort of dictatorship of cancel culture, which behaves more oh, like it's, a mob. It, it's the state uh, also. It's the state also. It's also the state. We're talking, we're talking, um, we got to take a break, Kristen. We're talking to Kristen Van, Van Uden. Her book is When the S Sickle Swings. Uh, we're going to talk more about what we're seeing, what we can learn from the history, uh, Eastern, primarily Eastern communism, and what we're seeing today and how we need to have our own rising and, uh, and stand up for Christ. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. This is Dan Laboon Markham with another episode of Country Up at the Bishop Markham Ranch in Goldendale, Washington. Fisher Man. The Columbia River Bar, where the mighty Columbia meets the massive Pacific, is no place for wimps to work. There are hundreds of sobering reasons. Over 200 shipwrecks and many more boats met their demise. As to why this boiling cauldron of water is rightly called the Graveyard of the Pacific. 
My great-grandfather, a stalwart, virtuous man and lay preacher, was one of the pioneering fishermen who came to Oaxaca, Washington, to strike it rich on salmon in the 1870s, a time when ships were made of wood and men of iron. My ancestors faced this very water in 30-foot sailboats, not unlike those on the Sea of Galilee. Give some understanding as to why Jesus chose commercial fishermen as four of the Twelve Apostles. Hardy souls, these men, men of perseverance, willing to take a risk to face death and then go at it again. As you may recall, Jesus called James and John the sons of thunder. Having worked on fishing boats, I know a little something about fishermen who thunder. Colorful, raw language, raw emotion, and the sheer force of will. Suffering persecution and the threat of death, those boys stood up for what was right, pushing through the storms of life. It's time for men of the church to heed the call to be men of virtue and perseverance for the sake of righteousness, ever pressing upstream with God's truth as a flow of culture pushes back against what is right, true, just, and good. Be a fisherman. Get on board and grab an oar. This is Dan Laboon Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. We invite our mama bears to join with us at deepadventure.com. You'll have access to all of the Long Ride Home TV shows even before they air on EWTN. Plus, three years of the shareable Ocean Sunrise daily catechism videos. Plus, at deepadventure.com, a 20% discount at our online store with all of our great t-shirts and clothes and books and rosaries and medals and all kinds of accessories. You'll also get an autographed copy of Bear's latest book, and for a limited time, a Catholic biker stuffed teddy bear. All at deepadventure.com. Come on, Mama Bears, let's hear you roar. Did you know that each Saturday morning you can receive the shareable YouTube video version of the Bear Wozniak Adventure in our inspiring weekly newsletter, even before it airs on the radio or hits the podcast apps? Never miss another episode. You can even binge watch Bear's inspiring guests. Think about the impact you can have sharing these videos with your friends. Go to deepadventure.com and click the subscribe button. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. When Satan wants to attack, he assa- he, what he does is he attacks the family. He attacks the domestic church. He starts there by trying to erode uh, the, the, the roles of the mother and the father and the, and the love of the mother and the father for the children. And so we, we at deepadventure.com, we have a website, deepadventure.com, and we invite men to go there and join the Man Cave. The Man Cave is a, is a non-Facebook community, and uh, we share with each other there our challenges. We encourage each other. It's kind of like the Cave of Adullam where the, where the misfits all kind of gathered with King David, and then there they formed each other, and God formed them into the mighty men of valor. But what's cool about the man cave is so we have monthly Zoom meetups with all the men, but also there's this three-year curriculum on manliness, which is part of my book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone, published by Sophia, is uh, excerpts from that are, are, you'll find there too. Plus there's audio and video and assessments and taking action steps. But dads, here's what I want to tell you. This is a great thing for you to go through and to go through with other men. But I don't know of anything else where fathers can lead their sons through a school on manliness. So we encourage you to visit our site, deepadventure.com. And mama bears out there, go enjoy the mama bears at deepadventure.com and get your men into this into this uh, this uh, this uh, school. Uh, they used to call it in the Old Testament the school of the prophets. We call it the school of manliness. Get your men to participate with us at deepadventure.com. We're interviewing today Kristen Van Uden in her new book, When the Sickle Swings, uh, speaking about uh, th- this historical cycle of oppression and communism, which you've seen labeled in many different ways. It all comes back to worshiping the state. In the time of Rome, it was worshiping the emperor. You know, uh, Myself, as a Ukrainian, 
I, my great grandfather fled Stalin when uh, they would go into the Ukraine and say, "Okay, you're all gonna, you don't have your own farms anymore. It's all collective farms." But now what we're going to do is we're going to make you still produce as much as I used to do, but we're, and we're going to take our big percentage back to Russia. And eventually resulted in the starvation of, I think it's close to 10 million uh, Ukrainians died because not only did they take the, the, the wheat, they took the, the seed uh, for the next year's planting. And, uh, but my great-grandfather, Stefan, uh, uh, fled Russia, and uh, my grandparents uh, met on the boat on the way to America. And so uh, I have a real, I, ha I have memories of my grandparents talking about their experience uh, with the Russian uh, oppression of Ukraine. And so, uh, and, and we, 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 uh, we see this today. Uh, I, I really, I see this cancel culture as being so consistent with, uh, it's, 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 it's that fascism, it's that totalitarianism that you've seen in a lot of different masks, but it's always the same demon. Mm -hmm. That's a great way of putting it. And one lesson and one similarity that we can draw, I think, between the way the communist state operates and what's going on today in the West is the propaganda directed towards the youth and towards children, even in schools. So as mm. we've seen the insane propaganda about like the transgender movement and just basic tenets of reality being disrupted and these lies that are being forced on our children from the most vulnerable age, is a tactic because those will be the citizens of the next generation of of those who are calling the shots in government and, and the economy and everything. So in, in every country that I examined, of course, there were special propaganda teams and programs directed at children. Some of them are very eerie. So one story that particularly sticks out out of Cuba was that the kids would go to school and the teachers would line them up tell them all to close out their eyes and stick out their hands and ask God for a piece of candy. And then minutes would elapse, they would be standing there waiting and nothing would happen, obviously. And then they said, okay, now ask Fidel for a piece of candy, meaning Fidel Castro, the dictator. And at that point, the teachers would go around and put a piece of candy in each of their hands. <laughs> so this very obvious tactic of brainwashing to worship Fidel and to think of God as either non-existent or not going to help you, someone who cannot be relied upon, it is so insidious, but it's those formative moments that can make or break a whole life. Well, tell, tell us one by one some of these people in the book, because I think stories... Uh, you know, we can talk about all kinds of events and things that have happened. Tell us mm -hmm. the stories. That's what we say in Hawaii, talk story. Tell us the story mm -hmm. of one or two of these people that really stand out to you that are you talk about in your book. Yes. Oh, who to pick? So uh, there's, so, there's so many. Um, I think I will start with, let's see. I'll start with a lady named Olga from Czechoslovakia. So she is from the city of Brno, which is a Czech city. And her story I found very relatable because it was really one of white martyrdom, which I think is what most of us experience here in the West. Um, it's always possible we'll go to prison for our beliefs and that we'll get martyred. That might, that's not out of the question yet, but it's more so how do we deal with these daily, and as she put it, death by a thousand cuts. So mm. she um, grew up in a Catholic family and her parents refused to stop going to mass, even when it was outlawed for all intents and purposes by the what, communist what, what government. Year, what year was this about? So she was born in the right after the Second World War, so 1948. Okay. Um, so right when Czechoslovakia was coming under the Soviet bloc's control, basically. And um, they always used the same tactics, so rounding up the priests and religious. So in Czechoslovakia, this happened under... Um, two waves called Operation K and Operation R, where the monks were rounded up, deported, and put basically into a prison. Um, the nuns also were. They were also made to... Why do they hate Catholics so much? Because, <laughs> I mean, who's the author of this? It just They're saying the quiet part out loud. The mm -hmm. devil is behind this. Mm -hmm. And purportedly, um, they say that religion is the opiate of the, of the people. So, using that quote of Lenin, that it's just a, a fantasy that... Uh, must be done away with in the name of progress, in the name of scientific and cultural progress. But really, it, it's obvious the their hatred for the mass. I mean, even using their utilitarian terms, the mass isn't hurting anybody. So why would 
you know, why would it be taking away from society? It's actually good for social cohesion and for neighborly behavior. And that's, these things have been proven. So they even taken by their own metrics, <laughs> mm -hmm. it's, it's still obvious what they're really doing. So Olga would go to church in secret. Her family would walk to a different church in the city every weekend. And they, would, they were instructed to keep their eyes down so that if you were questioned by the secret police, you could, without lying, say, I didn't know who else was there. I don't know the name of the priest. I didn't wow. make eye contact with them. Wow. No, nothing. I plead the fifth. And they, many of them would be questioned and would have to um, have that plausible deniability. Confession was also another big hurdle. Um, something I go into detail a lot about in the book is this conception of the loyal or juring priests, which as you're familiar with the French Revolution will sound similar to you, where a percentage of the priests actually basically defected from the faith and remained loyal to the state rather than to the church. So in Czechoslovakia, this took the form of, um, it's called Pachem in Terrace, uh, that's its later name, and earlier the Slovak National Church, where the state, like Henry VIII, basically said, forget the Pope, we are the head of the Catholic Church in, Czech, uh, in Czechoslovakia now, you must obey all of our changes, which of course just completely rejected and violated Catholic principles. And so some priests took that bait though, because out of fear, out of pressure, blackmail, like many different motivations, they found it too hard to remain loyal to the Vatican. And so these these loyal state priests were the ones who were obviously given church property and celebrated by the state and allowed to option to operate publicly whereas the true priests who remained loyal to the vatican and you know adhering to all catholic principles and against communism had to operate in secret underground would you and say would you say that's similar to the russian church now well the russian orthodox church definitely um unfortunately the Russian Orthodox Church is heavily and has been proven to be heavily infiltrated by the KGB. So their patriarch Kirill right now, who's an advisor to Putin, is actually like openly former KGB. And, he, and they're not so, just just to make it clear, they're not in communion with the Catholic Church. Correct. Yes. Well, but, what church? Uh, what church in Russia is? Just to. Um, so there are uh, Eastern Catholics in Russia, as far Eastern as Eastern Orthodox understand. and. Um, no, they're Eastern Catholics. So it's. Oh, okay. uh, these are oh. Catholics in communion with with Rome. Um, and the Ukrainian Catholic churches, too, because... And the Ukrainian Catholic churches, Yeah, my yes. dad was Ukrainian Catholic, yeah. Oh, okay. nice, yeah. But I didn't mean to go away from it, but it's hap that is still happening, is what I, the point I was trying to make. Yeah. It, yes. where, wherever you have a church state, a church that's controlled by the state, there's an issue. Oh, I see what you're saying, yes. Yes, um, and actually one, I interviewed a Slovak politician who was heavily involved with uh, the secret church and well, we'll, he we'll, makes that analogy too. Okay, we gotta, uh, take, we gotta take a break. <laughs> it's so hard to get you to talk, Kristen. No, you're, no I, I'm teasing you, I'm teasing you, I'm teasing you, but you're, you're so well-spoken and your message is so important and there's such a joy of the you. Lord and you were so glad. To, we're definitely gonna have to have you come back on the show when you represent that other, other books too. Uh, we have one more segment though. We're gonna dig deeper with Kristen Van Newton, her new book, When the Sickle Swings. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back. People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different tally awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the Mama Bears or the Man Cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wastick, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wasnick Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. 
Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. When you go to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel, you get access to all of our free playlists, including hundreds of episodes of the Bear Wozniak Adventure, plus the three-year journey through the whole catechism in our Ocean Sunrise Catechism series. And you even get short clips and live streaming of Bear and Cindy's Adventures in Paradise videos. Go to YouTube and subscribe to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure channel. still listening i thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station well you asked for it here is more of the bear wozniak adventure aloha welcome to the bear wozniak adventure hey guess what everybody you maybe you already know this but long ride home season four all filmed here in hawaii the tv motorcycle show uh immersive reality show on ewtn is airing on ewtn and it's also available on Prime Video. So if you want to power watch it, you can go to Prime Video and watch all those episodes. But also, if you go to deepadventure.com and become a mama bear or a man cave member, you have access to the, to the exclusive YouTube version. So anytime you want to, you can uh, accidentally turn on Long Ride Home while your brother-in-law is visiting or that son that doesn't know doesn't doesn't know about the lord and and uh it's 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 a sort of show where people well what is this about these guys are riding in a pack they're riding motorcycles across the new the new episode it's all filmed in hawaii but across the united states and it kind of grabs their attention and in a way it's kind of like speaking in tongues we're speaking in the language of the common man and uh they they get into seeing these gritty men uh doing these adventurous things and then they find out we're talking about jesus so we encourage you to to check out long ride home with bear wozniak on the w10 network at deepadventure.com and uh and uh on prime video our guest today is christian van newden her new book uh, when when the sickle swings giving us a historical perspective and how we can apply uh our under that understanding of the totalitarian uh, oppression of communism so this woman then you're saying it, the, the church in Czechoslovakia there was a there was a false church and then there was the real church yes and so this burden fell to the laity to have to discern which priests can I actually go to which ones are loyal to the church and which ones are going to turn me in and she discusses how confession especially was a real challenge because Sadly, many of these priests who defected to the state would sometimes break the seal of confession and were known to do that when questioned in an interrogation. And so the faithful had to protect themselves, not only spiritually going to a priest to practice the real faith, but also just from the government because of these collaborator priests, which was a really sad phenomenon, but one that we, again, saw in the French Revolution and have seen whenever a state tries to control the church like this. So she would use the tactic of, again, going to a different church every time, whispering, making sure it was at night whenever possible, or going only to priests that she knew she could trust. You know, because, um, cause, cause people think, like during the COVID thing, Oh, well, you can worship God anywhere. You can go out in the ocean and surf and pray. You can pray anywhere. But um, for Catholics, it's different. Mm -hmm. uh, only for Catholics is it different because it's only with the priest, the ministry of the priest, that we can receive the Eucharist, that we can receive exactly. the sacraments. Exactly. And this, the, it's, these stories are so inspiring because of their deep devotion to the sacraments and how they stopped at nothing. Like... Um, so in Czechoslovakia, these bishops were secretly consecrated and priests were secretly ordained and would often have to go around in plain clothes to avoid detection. But that was all to ensure that apostolic succession was continued, because without that, the church would die off. And then um, to pivot to another person I interviewed real quick, this gentleman named Arturo, this was one of the most inspiring stories. He was in prison in Cuba for 17 years as a political prisoner, and he recounts seeing secret masses within the prisons. And sometimes a priest would be there and they would actually be able to have a mass, but even sometimes when there was no priest, so there was not able to be the confection of the Eucharist or transubstantiation, the faithful would still pray the prayers of the mass and then just reverently pause during that time when the consecration would occur 
um, in order to keep their Sunday obligation as best that they could. So it's really like that was one of my takeaways from these interviews is that staying close to the sacraments, you know, going through anything, walking miles barefoot, sneaking around, or even resorting to this in the in the prisons was the way that they were able to keep their faith through all these trials. You know, I had a, I had a friend, not, not going to the next thing, I think you studied Romania too, right? I had a friend who was, who was, who was led by... Um, uh, led, led by an angel to escape um, from R Romania. I had one friend wow. that would go in and, and smuggle Bibles, and nice. yeah, Robert Ewing was his name. And then later, uh, and then this 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 man uh, was in uh, was was one of the. It was a non-Catholic um, um, expression of the body of Christ, and I always like to say people go, oh well, um, well you know we should be talking about non-catholic christians but here, here's what i was praying the other day and the lord kind of showed me this i think you know even though they might not have the fullness of faith if they've been baptized with the trinitarian baptism they have the fullness of god within them you know they, because god is not bifurcated and so we have to love and cherish all christians whether they're fortunate enough to be in the fullness of faith or not but this man was actually led out of romania by a, a light at night an angel would lead him through wow. barbed wire fences and, and the, the story is amazing i got to travel with him a little bit at one point oh my goodness but, I'd um, love to meet that. <laughs> yeah but i mean they're 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 they would go they would pray and then the lord would tell them meet here and they would appear at certain parts in the in the forest and it would be like the Holy Spirit would tell them where the meeting was going to be. It got to be mm -hmm. like that. Tell us about Romania. We've got about five minutes. Tell us about Romania. Sure. So, so I interviewed several people from Romania and then also Hungary. So this area of Transylvania was kind of tossed between both countries, especially during after the First and Second World Wars. So uh, a lot of the stories from that area are very similar and included these harrowing escapes, just as you talk about, mm -hmm. towards the West into Austria. I interviewed one monk who swam over the river from Hungary into Austria, into the arms of some Christians there who were willing to help him escape. Um, Romania is very interesting because it's one of the last Eastern European communist states and probably one of the worst dictators. So Nicolae Ceausescu and his wife Elena, who were executed on TV, on. Christmas Day, December 25th, and they they had one of the weirdest cults of personality um, out of any of these dictators. And uh, the lady Ada, who I interviewed from Romania, remembers she was just a child when Ceausescu was in power, but he would have these propaganda hours that would go on for four or five hours on TV, and people were kind of forced, it was expected that you would watch these. And her parents, in a small act of defiance, refused to turn on the TV and they would pray the rosary instead during that time. So they really drove home the importance of guarding your mind and your mm -hmm. soul, the onslaught of propaganda. So it's not only refusing to go along with things in the public sphere, but it is keeping your own soul out of the hands of these lies too. That's so, I mean, that's so important. Uh, it, it, now more than ever, there's an, uh, there's an attack through social media we need to guard our hearts. What what do we show? What do we allow on TV? What are we look? What are we reading? Uh, you know what? You know we're, people are addicted to reading the news, and 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 maybe it's good to know the news. But as soon as it becomes something, that's, you know, the, it just sucks you in, mm -hmm. you know, and you take your mind off of Christ, and it's all this polarization of thinking that tends to go on, on too. So this this what you're saying is to guard your mind. Mm -hmm. so important because exactly. your mind your mind is my mom used to say your mind is like a field what you plant mm -hmm. in your mind will you will have a harvest and not just mm -hmm. you know it'll be a hundredfold harvest so be kind to your to your sweet mind and, and plant beautiful what Paul said whatever is good whatever is beautiful whatever is right whatever is just think on these things we need to dwell on on the goodness of God mm -hmm. and the and yeah, I'm sorry, I got carried yeah, away. Yeah, and that's so, the message of this book, really, is that resistance, many people ask, how could Catholics resist? And many of them, like the Slovak politician I interviewed, actually led demonstrations and led political resistance. But really, the greatest and most important form of resistance is this internal holding on to your soul, because communism, as we've discussed, it's this doctrine of the Antichrist, it's the devils behind it, and they want to take your soul. They want to impoverish you and to destroy the physical planet, 
and everything in society, but more importantly, they're trying to send souls to hell. So that is really, if that's all you can do, that is the greatest victory. That is, is the, that is the essence of the battle, is that the battleground yeah. is right in your heart. You know, Jesus, exactly. Jesus' big question was, who do, who do they say that I am? Who do you mm -hmm. say Jesus is? You know, pe people right now listening to this, maybe they're kind of caught in that crossfire, that societal crossfire. Just seek the true good. Our, our goal isn't to revolutionize our political world. Our, our goal is to, bring, is to bring you to Jesus Christ and have you, uh, you experience the joy and experience the love of God and know that God loves you and has a perfect plan for your life. Satan hates you and wants to destroy you, you know. And so um, it, it's important to, to have solid Catholic teaching. A book like this, When the Sickle Swings by our guest Christian Van Uden, read the Catholic Catechism. Read Warren Carroll's seven, is it? I think it's a seven volume set on, on the history of basically Christendom. Um, and you will learn a lot, but don't don't focus always on well these evil people or this cabal or this or that. It it it, it may all be true, but the essence of what you're writing is uh, we battle that, but we battle we we win that battle right in our own hearts, and then one by one we can lead people to Jesus. There used to be an old song by Love Song, a, a Christian rock band, and it said, "Reach both your arms up, re re give heart, give Jesus your whole heart, with one arm reach up to Jesus, and with the other one bring a friend." You know, and that, that's, that's the good news of, of, of Christians. Christian, we got to go. Um, mm -hmm. Hope we can have you back on our show. You're so well-spoken, and there's such a genuine... Oh, there's a love of, There's a love of truth in you that's very obvious. Oh, thank you. And, and we, we, <laughs> I appreciate that. We appreciated our time together. We always say here on the show, aloha at the end of our show, so get ready. I'm going to do the, the Hawaiian aloha. You know, when God breathed into Adam and Eve, he gave them a living soul. And Jesus said, my peace I give you, my peace I breathe with breathe." My peace I give you, my peace I leave with you. And he breathed his Holy Spirit. Aloha means to give breath. So may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Thanks for listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell. Thank you.